Zdravo Mihajlo, kako si? Nadam se da ide dobro sa tenisom. Sara, Sara jo, ćao Sara. Prijatno iznenađenje vidjeti i tebe na ovom lajvu. Puno pozdrava i svaka čast na svemu što radiš. Veliki pozdrav za sve i hvala što ste ovaj, došli. Imamo još jednu epizodu <clears throat> druženja. Ova će večerašnja biti na engleskom jeziku sa Šervinom. Ovo je, mislim, naša treća po redu ovaj, epizoda Self Mastery projekta, tako da ću krenuti da pričam na engleskom jeziku za sve, oni koje, sve one ljude koji ne razumeju engleski jezik. Žao mi je, ali... Ovaj, uh, također ću biti redovan sa uh, ovim uh, druženjima i na, engleskom, i na srpskom jeziku pardon, jednom do dva put nedeljno uh, o, nadam se da vam se svidio intervju sa profesorom doktorom Draganom Ivanovom mislim da je to bio jedan od boljih lajova koji sam uradio i jako sam uživao u njemu kao i onaj sa Žarkom i vi ćemo pre par nedelja i uh, want to say hello to everyone. Uh, thank you for for joining <clears throat> this live tonight. Uh, another episode on the self mastery project, and um, I'm very excited uh, to to speak to Shervin again. Uh, we are going to deep dive into nutrition tonight, and um, you know Shervin is going to. Uh, break it all down for us. Uh, we're going to talk about alkaline pH in the body versus acidic. We talk. We're going to talk about the inflammation. How do we? What? What? What does cause inflammation in our body? How do we actually get it? How do we get rid of it? Is inflammation natural? Should we stop inflammation process? Should we allow it to happen? Should we uh, join forces? Should we moderate it? Uh, we're going to talk about uh, protein, carbs, fat. We're going to um, talk about the ratio of these three, what diets are good or not good, or, you know, um, what, you know, what kind of metabolic processes are happening uh, when we consume specific food. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, also uh, some supplementation. Um, we're going to talk about different climates and different parts of the world and how does that affect um, the nutrition, obviously the body temperature and so forth. And we're going to talk about uh, sports nutrition as well, a little bit for all the athletes that are um, online that are going to uh, watch this, whether it's live or whether it's uh, afterwards. I think, I mean, it would be very useful also for me. There's always something to learn and I'm also going to, of course, be sharing my own, my own journey with nutrition <clears throat> and, and something that, uh, that uh, I've already written about in, in the book Serve to Win uh, that was published in 2013, 12, 13. Um, and so a lot has changed since then. So we're going to try to get into the nutrition and uh, my own journey. And Shervin is going to share the, the, the science behind it and, and his own journey and hopefully you guys can uh, can maybe take something away that uh, that can be beneficial for your health and and for just overall consciousness of of health and nutrition again i have to say this before we start because it, we we're uh, saying this every every time um that this is our perspective it's of course we are we are sharing and we're taking our time and investing energy into trying to share with all of you guys um, what we have been through, what has positively affected us, what has maybe negatively affected us in our, on our health and our nutrition or our um, mind, body and soul um, connection. And, and obviously, uh, you know, we are not preaching, we are not throwing uh, um, things out there that everyone should follow or should do, you know, it's, it's, you have, everybody has the right and freedom to choose what they want to, you know, follow what they want to do and the concepts and the diets they want to follow. So I respect that. And hopefully you will respect also my decision to, uh, to do this. And, and I do it from, uh, I assure you best intentions. Okay. So I'm going to invite, uh, Shervin in, uh, Shervin, if you're, there please just uh, 
text me in this chat so I can invite you in in the live. Svima veliki pozdrav, hvala. Lepo je vidjeti toliko naših ljudi. Nadam se da ćete ostati da gledate ovaj live i na engleskom jeziku. A bit će i prevoda, to je bit će i ovih verzije na našem jeziku vrlo brzo. Ok, so, where is Shervin? Trying to find him. Where are you, bro? Oh, he is. Okay. Hey. Aho. Aho, brother. <laughs> Good to see you, bro. Thanks for Good coming to see you in. Too. How are you? Very well, very well. Thank you. Thank you so much. I don't have my uh, Mickey t-shirt on. Uh, I understand that some people uh, disliked my Mickey shirt. Um, but uh, it's one of my, fav my, 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 my kids' favorite shirts. So that's why I was wearing it. Um, hey, but I'm, I'm, going simple. I'm going simple this time. Check it out. I'm going simple. Very, the little croc is here. That's all. You're always, uh, you're always sleeveless. Why is that? Are you showing well, your guns or what? <laughs> yeah, um, <laughs> is that Rafael Nadal? He's wearing sleeveless. Yeah, Ra Rafael Nadal has got uh, probably slightly stronger arms than you, but uh, you're you're right there. Well, yeah. I got it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so um, yeah, so I'm just I'm bringing out the competition in you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're, you're inspiring me, man. Um, so I'm gonna sw I'm gonna switch off the the comments. I'm gonna turn them off. Um, so we can focus on conversation and of course as we usually do for anybody joining now we're going to turn on the comments uh, as we come close to our live um, close to the end of our live and then of course we're going to answer your questions so um, brother thanks for joining in I've uh, done uh, the introduction I've said that you know what are the kind of uh, topics and, and, and elements of health and nutrition we are going to focus on tonight or today for you. Um, and we are going to deep dive into nutrition. We're going to talk about alkaline versus acidic, inflammation, protein, carbs, fats. What, are, what, what do those represent? The meta metabolic processes of how do we use the energy between the organs, between the cells, the, the um, sports nutrition, that's something very interesting. I think there's a lot of athletes that are on the live and they're going to, you know, watch the videos. So I think uh, that will be very interesting to talk about as well. So let's start first things first. Um, what is alkaline? What is acidic pH? What is the balance between the two? Where should we be for our optimal health? Okay, so... I think first and foremost, everyone's different in terms of their stage in life, where they're at, you know, you are a world-class athlete, you know, and some people are looking to just be healthy their entire lives and they're keeping at a steady pace. And I've told you that before, it just really depends on what your goals are for that moment while considering the long run, right? So we don't want to completely deplete ourselves by building our bodies up just for one moment, but we want to keep it even keel. And that's where acidosis and alkalinization comes in handy and where we can relate back to it. Mm -hmm. I've told you before, fruits, plants, anything in that area are catabolic by nature. What does that mean? They break things down in the body. They're detoxifying. They hydrate the body. They give you minerals. They give you nutrients. And then in the animal kingdom, you know, because I'm sure a lot of people that are watching this, people get animal products. Those are anabolic by energy, which means they build the body up and they cause toxins to happen in the body at a more rapid rate than plants and fruits. That being said, the alkalization and acidic scale goes from zero to 14. Okay. And so the body's natural, you know, pH where we want to be at is somewhere around 7.4. That's the healthy equal equilibrium homeostasis line for interstitial acidosis, acidosis and alkalization. 
It's very important to understand that that's our baseline. And that's the baseline in our cell. And 7.4 stands for percentage of hydrogen or parts per hydrogen. It's how much hydrogen is actually in the cell. And believe it or not, we need to be acid in our body. There's certain functions in our body that needs to have acid, our saliva, our gut. Like as our stomach, for example, our gut, right? We got to have the uh, hydrochloric acid. acid. That break, that, exactly, that breaks down the food. Correct. Mm -hmm. So we don't want to demonize acids. Yeah. You know, we just want to understand how the body works. You get what I'm saying? Yes. And so at the center of the cell, the pH is going to be somewhere around 7.4. And on the edge of the cell, it's going to be somewhere around 4. And it's that polarization, right? And our system, our entire body works on positive and negative charge. It's that polarization that creates a heartbeat, right? That's an electrical impulse. So we want to have polarization in our body and we want to know how to supplement the body so there's a steady balance. The problem is, is that in today's modern mechanistic world, we're eating so much processed foods. Anything that has a label on it with ingredients and, su and supplement facts, that's a processed food. Iso-related ISO ingredients that are put together is a processed food. Majority of processed foods are acid forming foods. What does that mean? It means the body has to develop acids just to break it down. It's not ease and grace. You know, if you're gonna eat a fruit, you know, in nature, you know, the body is really easily assimilates that fruit. That's why I break my fast breakfast with fruit. Fruit is the most important thing to eat first thing when you're breaking your fast every day. So, we got to understand how the body works and how the detoxifying centers of the body works. And I think we got into it a little bit on the last live yes. where we were talking about the kidneys and the adrenal glands and the lymphatic system. The lymph system is the pump it, that pulls all the toxins out of the body. And if your body is stagnated because it's been working overtime, trying to break down super complex sugars. Okay. For example, we have the monosaccharide and we have polysaccharides. Monosaccharides means just what it is, simple sugar. Polysaccharides means something that's complex, okay? And the same thing with proteins. When you're eating meat, those are complex amino chain acids that the body has to break down. A protein is a composition of amino acids. So the more complicated they are, the more work the body has to do. And if you have a stagnated lymph system, meaning your body's ability to detoxify is not working properly, you're just compounding the problem. And after five, 10 years, 20 years of this, all of a sudden your body goes from being alkaline, having a center point of 7.4, it starts dropping into acidity. Most people that, have, that are obese or have cancers or other forms of disease, their blood levels have a high level of toxemia, which is toxins in the blood, and their acidosis, they're, they're higher in the acid charts. That's a fact. You can test people's um, acidity through saliva, first thing on the rise. So what we want to do is we want to create a balanced system, and we want to know how we got there in the first place. What are foods in nature that we should be consuming on a daily basis? What kind of water should we be drinking? How do we hydrate ourselves properly? All of those things. And as you know, I take that stuff very seriously. I don't drink water at restaurants. I don't let them put ice in my restaurants. I take my water from my house that I've put through a 12 stage filtration system and I'm getting it from spring water. I take that stuff very, very seriously. I don't allow anyone in my house to drink you know, water that hasn't been gone through our system. That's how serious I take it. Mm. And, it's, and it's the same thing with the way we've got to recognize our food and how we can get, we can start getting there before the inflammation starts. Now you mentioned inflammation when we first started off because that word inflammation is being thrown around everywhere. It's being no touted now as the precursor to all diseases. And there's different forms of inflammation. Let me just run off the top of my head because our body has different markers for inflammation. And to give everyone an example, and I want to keep it at a slow, steady pace, if you bang your, your wrist while playing tennis, or you hit it on the ground, or you know one of those patented slides that you do, you hit your knee, 
what happens? It gets swollen, right? You feel the burn, it gets swollen. That's your body's acute inflammation process to go and heal that area because something has happened to a joint or a shoulder or a muscle or if you get stung by a bee or anything, what is that? That's the body's ability to turn white blood cells and growth factors and send blood and nutrients to that area to protect it, to repair it, and to get it back to where it's supposed to be. If we didn't have that, we would fall apart on, on, in an instant. So basically inflammation is a natural response of the, Correct. Of the body. Yeah. It's an acute response system. We call that so acute. Should, should, we, should we help the body or kind of aid the body to, to not, by, by not eliminating or not stopping or not hin causing hindrance to the inflammation? Because in the sports world, we talked about it in the last live. We touched upon it very, uh, very yeah. shortly. We put ice on the joint, yeah. right? Yeah. So yeah. What, is, that, is that a correct way to deal with that? Because inflammation, as you said, is thrown around uh, a lot in the sports profession, in the sports medicine. Sure. You know, inflammation is something that you should not have, like get rid of the inflammation right away. Where on the other hand, what I've heard as well is that, you know, <clears throat> and, and what, what I've been following with my team, because at the first stage of my career, I was putting a lot of ice on my joints, yeah. uh, especially if I, if I say, you know, um, sprain my ankle or something like that. But then yeah. in the last six, seven years, I haven't been not putting ice on my joints at all. I have actually been trying to help body increase even more inflammation so increase the so to say uh the delivery of all these nutrients in that place which needs healing so that the way i've understood of course is that the healing process is shorter so you, you increase the recovery time when and where, where as if you put an ice you you do you do decrease the inflammation instantly but the healing process takes longer right yeah so I'm, I'm right down the middle of that, okay? Because ice has its positives. I think if you're getting into a continuous stage of a career where every time you're doing something, you're icing it back down, you could be causing some harm, right? There's certain moments where common sense will tell you like, okay, this needs to be ice because if this expands anymore, it's gonna cause more damage than it should. And we gotta curtail it a little bit. And, the, and a good analogy is a fever, right? Yeah. The body's innate immune system reacts to a virus or flu or whatever by bringing on the, um, by heating up the body, right? And we don't wanna interfere with that sometimes because that's the body cooking out whatever that doesn't need to be there. And it's the same thing conversely with ice. I use ice on certain occasions where my instincts are telling me, look, this is a pretty gnarly injury we need to constrict it a little bit right now and then kind of let it repair on its own because it's, it's too much. So I think that goes a little bit both ways. More importantly is taking anti-inflammatory drugs. You wanna, you know, I'm not a big fan of that. I know again, there's a time and place for anti-inflammatory drugs, but what are you doing? You're just basically masking the issue. You're not actually allowing the solution to be solved by the body by getting information there. Anti, you know, NSAIDs, anti-inflammatory drugs, those things are really toxic on the liver. We know that, that's science, that's, you know, doctors are talking about that all the time. So we wanna be very careful with how we, we use that. I know a lot of professional athletes, a lot of people in the collegiate sports that I know are using those. They were using things called Turidol, which is a very strong anti-inflammatory drug. What we're, what we're doing there is we're masking the body's ability to actually solve the issue. And so the acute injuries you got to go with your instincts. You know, if you sprain your ankle, it's not a bad idea to put it in a bucket of ice because it's about to expand and you want to you want to bring that swelling down. But that's not something you want to be doing all the time. You want to elevate it, you want to ice it immediately and then you want to get nutrients to it. You don't want to this isn't something that you start doing consistently if it's that if it's that big of an injury. And so these are acute situations and I'm using that as a metaphor on how the body reacts to a quick reaction problem that's happened. Now, conversely, the, the, the age of inflammation that we're in right now, 
we're talking about runaway chronic inflammation, okay? Mm -hmm. Runaway chronic <laughs> inflammation is a, basically the, the best way I can explain that is it's a silent inflammation and it's running on a very low grade level and we don't even notice it. And we could have low grade chronic inflammation for five years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. And the whole time our body is in a state of flux. And what happens is the communication of the inflammation centers aren't shutting down. And why aren't they shutting down? Because of a number of reasons. Because we have toxic overloads in our body, we got viruses in our body, we got bacteria, we got heavy metals, interstitial acidosis, all of these things, toxins that have accumulated from our environment. Our body's lymph system isn't properly forming. And from there, you can see these. And the, and the science community has named these inflammation markers. We have C-reactive protein. I think everybody's heard of C-reactive uh, protein. We have TNF alpha, which is tumor necrotic or tumor necrosis factor alpha. We have interleukin markers. We have um, cyclogenesis. We have, um, there's a couple more, eicosanoids, different inflammation markers that you can now do blood tests and see what ranges you fall into. And we have to be very, very present to what those inflammation markers are telling us. I always tell people, the first thing you want to do is go get an inflammation test so we can see where your body is humming at. Because it's not, we're not talking about that acute inflammation anymore. We're talking about a consistent flow of degradation and pain in the body. And the body is always staying in that system. And what happens when you're in that? You basically start to break down. And premature aging, metabolic diseases, chronic fatigue, fatigue syndrome, then you have a whole host of autoimmune issues, which is basically, what does autoimmune mean? Autoimmune means the immune system is attacking your own body. Well, how did we get there in the first place? And instead of taking a drug to, to try to mask that symptom of feeling that fibromyalgia or that celiac disease or whatever it is, Hashimoto's, all of those things, why don't we start getting to the root on how we got there in the first place? And the root is it is our diet, it's our nutrition, it's the way we sleep every night. It's the way that we think. It's the way that we operate. It's our mindset. All of these things play a factor. We now know stress, cortisol, is one of the main causes of a lot of these issues. But they all go together. It's not one thing or the other. And then so for our diet and nutrition, we really got to focus on eating whole foods. I know that's been said all the time, but we got to stay away from processed as much as possible. Process is not what our, our bodies are designed to eat. We're supposed to be eating seasonal food. You mentioned that earlier. We're supposed to be going with the season when the pollination occurs, wherever we are, whatever hemisphere we're in. So I always advise people, get in sync with the season. Get in sync with your farmers, local farmers. Support them. When we're eating seasonally, we're supporting the local economic situation as well because we're not dealing with importers that are importing from other hemispheres just to give you nutrition and to sell that. We got to get back to the basics. We got to get back to soil science. We got to get back to mineralization. We got to understand how vitamins work in the body. We got to also know about frequency in terms of timing and eating. One of the main questions I get from a lot of your people and a lot of my people in the athlete world is that when's the best time to eat? Yeah. You know, what, what, when are we eating nutrition? When are we eating fruits? When are we eating those things? I always say it just depends on your life. Someone like you, I say, you know, you get up on the rise, you hydrate, you drink clean water, you drink minerals, your lymph system starts to move, you start to go to the bathroom, you detoxify immediately. The first food you should be eating is some type of fruit, possibly grapes, melon family. I love those because those, family, th those families right there remove interstitial acidosis. They're detoxifiers. They push the lymph to move. And then from there, you can go into your first basic meal. It could be greens, it could be sprouts, it could be anything like that. And when, it, when you get done with a, with a vicious workout, hardcore training, that's the, probably the best time also to eat fruit after to replenish your glycogen stores and you can get back into a balance. And then from there, you go into your main meal of the evening. So there's so many layers that we can go into understanding how, what proteins are, what insulin is in the body, polysaccharides, all of those different things. Um, 
all of it goes together and it could sound complicated but it's so basic once you understand how the digestion system works and how we've gone awry in the modern world and and it's not these aren't even things to argue this is coming from the science and the literature of how the human body works how the human body breaks down food how it passes through the gut into the intestinal tract how it's absorbed through the epithelial layer and another thing is a lot of people are having a lot of gut problems right and they're having dysbiosis of the gut or leaky gut what is that how, what is leaky gut why does leaky gut go into autoimmune issues or food allergies it's basically you know your body's not able to break down the food properly because you have the wrong mic the, the microbiome is off in the in the gut which is a big part of digestion there's something like let me give you an example there's something called intrinsic factor intrinsic factor is in our gut it allows our body to properly absorb vitamin B12. Without intrinsic factor, we can't absorb methylcobalamin properly. So there's so many things that we have to get to the center of, and then we can start worrying about all the other stuff. But we got to really, really figure out how this system works. Beautifully said. I mean, there's <laughs> yeah, as you said, you know, there's there's a lot to to go into and uh, really <laughs> you know it's it's hard to it's hard to cover everything in one live obviously but i yeah. think uh, maybe let's uh, maybe you can uh, reflect a little bit on the um the balance and the need of the body uh for minerals and vitamins yeah. and i think where are those minerals and vitamins do does our body produce minerals and vitamins you know how do we go about that <clears throat> Yeah, so minerals comes before everything. We are compositely made of minerals. You know, you're basically calcium and we got so much magnesium in our body. Minerals are from the earth. Minerals are what program vitamins and nutrients to do what they're supposed to be doing in the body. Zinc, for example, is at the center point of our immune system. It helps us develop hormones as men. There's so many different angles. Ultimately, or originally, we're supposed to be getting all our minerals from the foods that we eat, right? Yeah. And it comes from the soil. And, you know, 150 years ago in America, and I'll just speak for America, and I, and I bet it's the same thing for worldwide because I know these statistics, everybody had a direct contact or direct correct connection to the food that they ate, meaning either they grew it or their neighbor grew it or their relatives across the street grew it. Today, less than a quarter of one percentage of the population here has any connection to their food, okay? Now, for some people, they immediately hear that and they're like, wow, they can actually see what a, what a big deal that is. Other people may not make the connection, so let me make the connection for you. Not only today are we getting demineralized food because we are not growing our own food and we're not putting the energy into the soil in terms of composting, creating um, soil science, nutrients, the right fertilizers, all of the, that kind of stuff, permaculture, those things. But, the, but our, our energy is not going into the land anymore. You know, and, and that's a big difference. That's a big deal. And that's why we're having so many issues with our food supply. Now we, it's become an industrial revolution where our foods are being grown by large, large farms that are monocropping everything. I'm talking acres and acres of the same food like strawberries or romaine lettuce. And they're doing that every single season. What do you get when you do that? You get basically nutrient, de, basically denatured food that's, that, that's lacking the nutrients needed that our body requires, that our our system requires these nutrient dense foods. That's why when, you know, for example, when I go to our farm in Kauai, right, and I'm eating the food on that land, I don't need a lot of food. I eat a small portion of fruit and salad and I'm full, like my, yeah. because it's nutrient dense. And then yeah. let me give you an example. A lot of people eat big, huge meals you know, of like fast food or things that they get at restaurants, big extravagant meals. And then two, three out and right after they eat it, they're like so tired because the body has to go to war basically to break all that down. And then two hours later, they're hungry again. Why is that? Anyone listening to me knows what I'm talking about. You can go eat empty calories 
and all of a sudden your body's craving nutrition. It's because the food is not mineral and nutrient dense and doesn't hold the amount of fiber we need to keep us moving and keep us regular. Our, we're basically a constipated nation and a constipated world. It's, that's a fact. We're not only, so not only are we constipated, but we're dehydrated too at the cell at a really grossly level. And this is all backed up by medical science. This isn't, this isn't some big conspiracy. This is the truth. I'm just talking about getting people healthier. And so when it comes to minerals and vitamins and nutrition, Mother Nature you know, provides it for us. The problem is now is that commercial food farming has removed and denatured that. We're not using um, the right types of uh, plant agriculture soil composites. We're using artificial fertilizers called NPK, which is nitrogen, potassium, phosphorus. Those things are run, wreaking havoc on our ecosystems, they're wreaking havoc on our food, and they're creating interstitial acidosis in the human body where we're becoming you know, less saturated in the nutrients that we need. And that's why we have to go to supplementation. Supplementation has basically been the key to order to get these nutrients. Now, we're not designed to be eating supplements, so if you're gonna supplement, just make sure you use your due diligence and find the right ones that work for you. We're designed to be eating healthy food that gets broke down in the gut, protein, fats, and carbs. You know, and what's a carb? A carb is carbon mixed with an oxygen. That's why it's a carbohydrate. And a calorie, we, 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 let, let, let me do the basics. What is a calorie? A calorie is a unit of measure that was basically supposed to heat up one gram per centigrade of water. That's what a calorie means. So let's learn what these words are. We're, we're so stuck in this modern mechanistic world where we're just reading things. We don't, we don't even know what they are. Let's get to the chemistry. I want to talk the science of all this, of how the human body works. Once we get the basics and the information's out there, like mm. I want to ask anyone, everyone listening, where are you getting your information on how the human body works? Who's teaching you? Is it something you saw on a television show? Are you reading chemistry books? Are you reading biology books? Are you just Googling it? Like the information is there, it's not complicated. You don't have to be behind a lab with the PhD coat. Those doctors are available for us to teach us information. That's where I learned a lot of my information is being around doctors, being around scientists, being around health practitioners. That's the lifestyle that I've grown up in. And it's, per, and it's getting to the basics of all of the fundamental science of how the human body works. And from there, once you get the basics down, then you can start going into things like Ayurveda, things like traditional Chinese herbal medicine, you know, things like soil science, things like top level of mineralization. Then we can get into antioxidants and understand what an antioxidant is and what free radical damage is and why we need certain antioxidants blueberries like why do we why are blueberries so healthy for you what makes them the color blue what is that pigment called phycocyanin why are why is blue so powerful in nature why is it the rarest color you know what i mean so there's layers and layers and layers and layers that we can go and i think fundamentally just understanding how the body um digests food absorbs the food and then eliminates the food is the key component at the center of it all and really and making choices. Would you, would you agree as well that what, what I found in my own experience is that knowing also the timetable of uh, the functions of each organ, like mm -hmm. essential yeah. organs and when they peak, yeah. when, is their, when is their time within the 24 hour table is also yeah. quite important in order to adjust your feeding time, you know, your, your, your consumption of, of specific food to aid that organ to whether it's liver, whether it's gonna detoxify or kidneys. Right. Is, is, that, is that something that, that people should, should also look into? Absolutely, it's not, it's not some, um, you know, crazy concept, you know, we're- we So what are, what are the, with, what are the yeah. fundamentals you would say? The fundamentals are, Kidneys. Kid, kid, kidney function is, yeah. I think, at the center point because that's, that regulates so much in our body. Okay. Kidneys are basically the, 
the battery and the backbone of pushing toxins out of our body to regulate potassium and sodium in the body. And on top of the kidneys are your adrenal glands. And we are just starting to figure out what these adrenals actually do. It's so much more than just the basic thoughts of, adrenal, of the adrenal system. And it governs so many things. They're part of so much metabolic function. They're part of hormone production. They're part of so many different things. They sustain us. They keep us at a consistent level. So I think the kidneys are, are really critical. Also understanding how the heart works and what, what homeocysteine levels mean in the heart. So anyone listening, I think it's always good to go, go get your homeocysteine levels test. Homeocysteine is an amino acid that's a byproduct of certain things. And if your homeocysteine levels are high, you could be in subject of certain things. You know, you know making sure that your liver is proper, properly functioning. If you are a um, alcohol drinker and you drink consistently and you basically cross the threshold of certain daily limits of alcohol, you're, you're burdening the liver. You're, the, bur the, the liver has to metabolize the alcohol. There's so many different things that you really want to be on top of it. You want to know what herbs to take that, that nourish the liver, that nourish the adrenal system. There's so, many, there's so many different avenues of Ayurveda that's involved that's combined with mainstream science. Mainstream science now is advocating certain ways of detoxifying the body. Um, I can go on and on. Like we know that the liver is part of the, the body that creates, um, you know, heats up the body. So if the theme is frustration and anger. You could have an overactive liver. Just go get bl blood work done and see if you have overactive enzymes in the body. I always say, talk to the doctor and find a doctor that understands the body fully as a whole, as opposed to just an isolated look. There's one, one thing that you said, which I think is, <clears throat> is, is very important that I would highlight, um, <clears throat> is that when you're not eating food that is, um, that is, that is not uh, nutrient dense, then obviously you're eating food that is demineralized and that is created in this industrial revolution, obviously. Yeah. So, um, so that in a way obliges you to, to look into the supplementation because you have to help your body in some way right. to get all the nutrients uh, and all the substances that are necessary for, for optimal metabolic function, right? That's correct, absolutely. So, so how does someone who, <clears throat> you know, lives uh, a modern life and doesn't have opportunity right now where they are with their life to grow their own food or get access to the farmers? Because, I mean, that's a good one because, you know, a, a lot of people say, well, we don't, we, you know, it's a, it's a very, a lot of people have a concern because uh, healthy food is expensive. You know, uh, uh, quality supplements are expensive. And, you know, we live in the world where, you know, there's obviously with this coronavirus situation, economy is breaking down. People, people are, are, are not willing to spend few more dollars on a supplement or quality food because yeah. they just have more important things. What would you, what would your communication be with them? How would you advise them to go about about their nutrition? Well, you got to get to the basics. You know, it's start with the basics. If, if you can't afford an extra dollars on organic food or anything like that, start looking and seeing what it is that you have been eating. Okay. And start eliminating things that are actually really, really evident that they're toxifying, they're, that they're very toxic to the human body. So process of elimination first. So before we go down this list of, okay, I need to add this, I need to add that, I need to add that. Let's just do a c current review of what we've been doing for the last 90 days, right? Because if you really look at it, most people are kind of eating the same thing every day. You know, mm -hmm. if you take someone's snapshot. They did, they did a test on this. They, they did a poll and they asked, you know, I don't know how many people. Most people eat the same thing every day. They might not realize it. But if you span it on a course of like a month, they're consistently eating the same foods. So first and foremost, see what foods you're eating and really evaluate like, okay, where is this coming from? How is it made? What are the ingredients in it? Are most of the ingredients in this things that you've never heard before and you can't pronounce? Are they 
chemistry words that sound like man-made compounds? Are there dyes in it? Are there, you know, uh, natural flavors in, which is something else you want to always avoid. Natural flavors could be all kinds of stuff. So start looking and seeing what you're consuming and start removing that from your diet and what you can replace it with. I mean, I have to say this. If you can't find fruit around you, I don't know what to tell you. Like you, you have to be able to find fruit. And even if it's not the most biodynamic organic fruit, that's better than eating a processed food that comes in a box, box that you have to microwave. But there, there's, there's, there's a lot of, you, you, you actually talking about the fruit. I think that's an important one because I, I personally eat a lot of fruit, especially in the first part of the day, especially in, in uh, uh, morning hours or, or early afternoon. Um, yeah. And and obviously there is this um, you know uh, theory or uh, understanding around uh, through different um, diet um, uh, promotions and so forth that the fruit is in 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 a large quantity is harmful because of the sugar uh, glycemic levels right so. Uh, can you reflect on that a little bit? Because there is, there's a lot of myths around fruit, that fruit is not good because the, I, I think from my personal experience and observation that, that a lot of people mix up the, sh the sugar that you get from the fruit with, a, with the processed sugar that you get from the actual refined sugar. So it's not the same sugar, right? I mean, That's maybe correct. You, can, you can say a few words about that. Yeah, so there is, I don't sit around and eat fruit all day, okay? If I was living a sedentary lifestyle as well, what does sedentary mean? It means where I'm not moving around and I'm just sitting there. If I just sit there and eat fruit all day, that's gonna become a problem. Fruit is uh, hydrating, it's detoxifying, okay? And there's many different kinds of fruit. For example, pineapple is super acidic. I, re I rarely eat pineapple because it's so acid forming. You know what I'm talking about, right? Yeah, yeah. me too. Me too. Yeah. It's filled with broccoli. But that doesn't. But that doesn't mean it's bad. It doesn't mean that it's bad. It, it just has, depends for your body type, right? Depends on your body type, and it depends on the timing, and it depends mm -hmm. on many things. We got to get a little bit like ninja-like here when it comes to our food. You know, we can't take this for granted and just be you know running around aimlessly eating things. We got to we got to be a little bit targeted. So for example, certain fruits have a high glycemic count. Some have a low glycemic count. What does that mean? That means your body's ability to respond to it with insulin because of the amount of simple sharp sugars it has. So the, the higher glycemic, the more insulin the pancreas has to produce to balance off your blood sugar, right? And so when we eat higher glycemic foods, we need to eat them around times where our glycogen has been completely depleted right? Mm -hmm. Which is why, you know, you can eat citrus while you're working out or after you work out. I, I, like I said before, I eat low glycemic fruit, berries, melons, grapes, things like that. Grapes are a little bit higher glycemic, but they're super detoxifier. I eat those on the rise. Those are my breaking my fast breakfast. And then other fruits I eat after I train, after I hit the gym, after I work out, that, so it's timing, it's utilization, it's things like that. Fruits get a bad name, mainly from, you know, the high fat community that are doing like, you know, ketosis and living yeah. in, in that reality. And I don't, I don't necessarily have a problem with the keto diet. I just think keto is more, was designed for people that were morbidly obese. And they had to drop that weight and the body had to start producing ketones. So it uses fat as an energy source, as a metabolic driver, as opposed to a carbohydrate, which is carbon, right? Yes. And so it, it's, again, it's, everyone's different. Everyone's body type's different. You can go through cycles. My advice is do what makes sense to you and do what works for you. If you are in an area where you have access to clean fruit, then you're stumped then you're awesome. You're the, this is the best ever. Time it right. If you don't have access to clean fruit, so now we got to look for a different source for energy. You know what I mean? Yes. And we got to do it properly. And when it comes to, hey, are you vegan? Are you carnivore? Are you a fruitivore? 
you know, are you paleo, all those things. I get that question asked all the time. And I, I don't run from it. I'm very straightforward with it. I personally am a qualitarian. Okay, and what does that mean is that I only focus on things that I know that are of quality and that work for my body. And I'm, I'm an experimenter. I try things. I, think, I, I find things that work for me. I'm pretty much 90%, 95% plant-based. And the 5% that I get from animal sources like ghee, which is clarified butter, that I get from A2 uh, cows from India, or um, bee products, or sometimes local egg yolks, things like that, I have no problem saying that. Those work for me. They work for my system. I try them out. It's all trial and error. Nobody can tell you what to do or put pressure on what to do. I make choices based on my heart and my body's ability to feel it out. It's so, it's so important. And, and I also have a conscious state where I know that, for example, commercial meat agriculture is terrible on our, in our world. It's a terrible atrocity what's happening to animals right now on that level. When it's not grow, when they're not produ they're not in involved with um, care and love and support, and it's become this industry and the amount of damage it's doing to our nature. We know that we've seen cowspiracy. We know those guys very well. I, I'm a supporter of a plant-based you know movement. I'm also a supporter of doing things the biodynamic way of creating balance in the human body and a balance in nature. And so, yeah. Sorry, bro. Uh, why, why, no. why, is it, why is it good to, or is it important to have our uh, leafy greens every day? Yeah, are you are you back? You okay? I'm here. I'm here. There you are. I, I, I thought I thought this question uh, surprised you a little bit. <laughs> no, 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 no. Because I, I, my question was, is it important to have uh, leafy greens every day, and if so, why? Yeah. Uh, well, dark leafy green. What is that? So that's spinach. That's romaine lettuce. That's red leaf lettuce. That's kale. All of those things. Absolutely, those are powerhouses of nutrients. All, I mean, basically, the more bitter it is, the better it is, okay? So remember, bitter is better. Our body wants bitters. It's like an herbal Ayurvedic message as well. The reason why I eat a lot of dark leafy greens is because I know where it's grown, and I know how much chlorophyll and iron and minerals and you know manganese and magnesium all of the minerals, the green leafy vegetables are basically sponges and bring, brings that all up. Also, they act as a prebiotic, right? So we always talk about probiotics, but it's a prebiotic. It's a prebiotic to our gut. It creates energy and synthesis in the gut, and it acts as a fuel for all the healthy bacteria in our, butt, in, our, in our gut. So we're not going into dysbiosis and something's not feeding off each other. It creates a great balance. I like to um, add a little bit of acids to my uh, green leafy vegetables and a little bit of oil, mainly avocado oil or, um, or olive oil. And when I say acids, I mean basically lemons from my yard or a little bit of apple cider vinegar, especially with things like kale, right? Kale is a tough, tough fibrous food. And so the more we can start the digestion process outside of the mouth and gut, the better. I always massage my salads and I let them sit for at least 10, 15 minutes, kale even longer when it's with the apple cider vinegar or lemon. It's really, really good. It's important. Awesome. The last question before we move into the questions from, uh, from uh, <clears throat> the people that are watching this uh, is how, um, how, do we, how, does, how do different climates affect nutrition? You know, the, the, obviously the, the, the temperatures in, in L.A. or West Coast or San Diego, where, where, where you are right now, yeah. most of the year you have really good climate. I mean, you, 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 you know, a lot of, lot of lot of variety of, of uh, uh, fruits and vegetables uh, throughout the entire year. But someone living in Scandinavia or somewhere up on the uh, uh, where it's very cold up in the north. 
how sure. did they how did they um you know deal with that what what would, what are the the things that that you would recommend them to uh, to eat well there's there's pros and cons to living in a mild climate one of the pros is that we we have access to a lot of fruits and vegetables because it's easy to grow here and we're also in an urban area so there's a lot of commerce here economically so you're getting things from all over the place but even if i go to a local whole foods here you know 70% of the fruits and vegetables are coming from south america they're coming from central america right and so what does that mean so i i really like places that have extreme weather why because whatever's grown there during that time is powerful it's fierce right it had to make it through the winter right it had to go and, and it had to be strong in order to do so especially wild crafted stuff you know so if you're in scandinavia you know you're eating certain things in scandinavia that are time tested that are powerful that have the gene have the energy have all those kinds of things like that whenever i'm in canada when i'm in northern ontario you know these are higher higher latitudes like just for example the sea buckthorn that's grown up there one of the most powerful powerful berries in the world i i am immediately when i go there i i eat them to a frenzy or the blackberry blackberry is another fruit that grows in northern climates here in the west coast of uh, america you have basically oregon washington state and then vancouver we call that the pacific northwest and in the pacific northwest everything you're eating there is pretty much wild crafted so the blackberries are growing everywhere and they go berserk right they're like unbelievable and they're fierce so you kind of take on that like fierceness and that's where you get all the flavonoids and phytonutrients and all the things in, in, in that that you want to take in in your own body also medicinal mushrooms medicinal mushrooms like chaga reishi turkey tail king trumpet all those things those are wild adaptogenic stuff that are growing in the wild it, but to break it down if you're living in certain places where you're not getting certain nutrition start researching and seeing cuz something is growing there there's something in the ocean there's something on the beach there's something in the mountains there's something there that is that's intrinsic to your locale and you got to get on that because mm -hmm. there's a reason why it's growing there and there's a reason why you're from there there's this power to that right it's yes. not a spiritual thing it's a um it's it's just a common sense thing like the native americans they knew exactly which cactus to eat the native americans knew exactly which uh you know what fruit could grow here you know what herbs to grow here the same thing with central america the same thing with mexico the same thing with canadians the same thing with the mayans you know all over the world the persians the, you know all of them pomegranate right pomegranate is what's growing like crazy in iran right all these different things we got to just know what's in our locale especially if our bloodline is from there absolutely wonderful brother thanks for sharing all these things today uh very um educational very informative really an eye opener or many things so um i'm right. just going to uh switch on turn on the commenting and uh i'm going to ask what, what, one, yes. one one last thing is methylation um you've heard yeah. me talk about methylation before methylation is somewhat become kind of like a new concept it's been around our body has a cycle it's called the krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle mm -hmm. this is how our cells replicate this is how our cells decide which cell should die through apoptosis or which ones should be you know recreated and mitosis we learned that like in 4th or 5th grade methylation is the body's ability to detoxify now what we know now through science and through new modern um healthcare is that a lot of people have methylating impairment and that's called the mthfr gene mutation which stands for methylation tetrahydrofolate reductase reductase enzyme and you can everyone can go get tested to know about to know where they stand if they carry a variance of that gene mutation if you have that gene mutation it doesn't matter about how much green juice you drink or what what kind of detox detoxing you do it means your cell is having trouble detoxifying it's very important to know that and if you're having if you have that methylation issue you can have cognitive issues mental issues emotional problems children that are having methylation is issues are sometimes considered to be on the spectrum of autism there's so many different things this is modern modern uh, modern science and 
the way to go around that is we want to make sure that we're eating methylating foods like sprouts, anything that has sulfur in it, broccoli sprouts, B12, methylcobalamin, instead of folic acid, L-methylfolate. These are things that encourage and help the body to detoxify at the cellular level. And that's one of the most important things to do. Thank you, brother. The, yes, so we got, we got some of the, the questions here. Thank you guys for your, for your patience and for your questions as well. Um, <clears throat> so we got the first one from a profile named Tanish Mahesh. Thank you so much. What foods help in recovery of the muscular and central nervous system? That's a great question. That's a really good question. Mm -hmm. I mean, that, that can go right across the board. Healthy fats and amino acids. Healthy fats encourage the central nervous system to balance out, right? So what's a healthy fat? Avocado, right? So avocado should be one of the main things that you'd be eating to calm the central nervous system down. Um, ghee is another one, right? I really like ghee. Um, I would say, are you vegetarian? Are you a meat eater? If you're a meat eater, then you're going to want to have grass-fed you know, meats, you know, things like that for proper re repair, especially if you're exercising and you're, you know, an athlete. Um, corella, spirulina, hemp protein, that combination with glutamine would help you tremendously. Proper mineralization. Those are the keys to repair for a body that's been put through the test. You know, if, you've, if you're doing grueling workouts or you just, you live a, a tough life. What, what about nuts and seeds? Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about nuts and seeds. Nuts and seeds are very acid forming. Okay. They create a lot of acid in the body. So let's understand the common sense of what that means. Why are they, why, why are they acid forming? Because they're so difficult to break down. Does that make sense, everybody? That's why meat is acid forming because it's a, it's a very complex protein that's made up of amino acids. And in order for the body to break down that protein, it has to break it up into different parts of amino acids. That process causes acidosis in the body. It's the same thing with nuts. So what are you gonna do to soften the blow on that? You're gonna sprout them. You're gonna soak them, okay? Yes. What does that mean? That means that you basically germinate the seed. And so pumpkin seeds, almonds, cashews, anything like that, if, you're, if you really are into that stuff, you gotta sprout them. And if you're into drinking almond milk or plant-based milk, which is great, don't go to the store and buy it. Make your own. You can Google it right now, how to make your own almond milk, how to make your own cashew milk. And it's an awesome, awesome thing to do. And just the power of the alchemy of making things in your kitchen and knowing that you are the spark to create that is so enjoyable. It's so much love. You do it with your family and friends. Best ever. Absolutely. That, that's um, – I – we 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 at home we have uh um we have uh, uh a kind of a habit we to always have kind of nuts and seeds around around the house uh my my kids like to eat um uh cashews mm -hmm. and also some uh you know pumpkin seeds mm -hmm. but we 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 do we do we soak them for about yep. 2 3 4 hours and then we uh maybe put them in the in the oven shortly so they they are a little bit crunchy uh, and they're a bit kind of a uh, more interesting or so to say tastier to eat oh, so, so i would soak them i would soak them for at least a day oh and then a day. Okay. at least a day and then oven roast them a little bit and put some sea salt on it okay. and then you could put other spices on there as well and for men uh, pumpkin seed is your best friend i eat a handful of sprouted pumpkin seeds every single day women too but for men i mean that's like you know that's zinc right zinc is goes straight to where it's supposed to go for a man <laughs> um a question from bv21 official thank you for your question is there a basic way to keep the kidneys and liver clean with food yes herbs herbs and fruit that's it you know so you want to be taking things like ashwagandha and holy basil and there's a lot of herbs out there specifically so you just go on google and type in detoxifying herbs start drinking herbal teas okay and stop eating processed foods 
things that are acid forming cause a burden to your kidneys and your lymph system. That in combination, so, so fruit, good hydration, and herbs mixed with workouts that you and I talked about. I just posted a story earlier of me inverting on the yoga swing out there. Inversions, jumping, exercising, vibration plate, which is now backed by medical science. All of those things get the kidneys and get the lymph system moving. Remember, our heart has a pump. Our heart is pushing blood, which is filled with oxygen and nutrients all over the body. The lymph does not have a pump. The lymph, the kidneys are pushing lymph, which is a fluid. We need exercise and movement to get that going. Mm -hmm. Well, um, you know, I think there's a lot of people asking uh, about intermittent fasting. I think you shared a little bit last week in your live, but can you just, you know, uh, shortly reflect on that again, please? Yes. Yeah, so I, I, I do intermittent fasting. I've been doing intermittent fasting for over 15 years. Um, I, it just works for me. It makes sense. And the concept behind it is that just thinking about food can start the digestion process, right? Think of it like if you smell food, if you smell a lemon, saliva starts to activate, hydrochloric acid starts to happen. Just the breakdown, the, meta, the metabolic breakdown or metabolization of food is so complicated in the human body. There's so many things that have to turn on and activate. I mean, everything, I can list them all off. It's crazy how much things have to go down. If we're doing that every day, six, seven times a day for 50 years, we're causing a lot of metabolic waste and a lot of cellular turnover. It doesn't matter if it's fruit that's grown in a biodynamic farm in Kauai or it's processed hamburger from wherever, right? It still has to break down. It does, those things don't change. Some foods are easier to break down, of course, but it still causes a circus in the human body. So if we go chunks of time, of not eating, we're allowing our body to start going into an area called autophagy or autophagy, depending on how you want to pronounce it. And that's an area where the body starts going and, and, and you know, figuring out issues in the body, immune breakdowns, parasites in the body, viruses in the body, bacteria in the body, things like that. And it starts cycling and metabolizing those things. Mm -hmm. And we know now that one of the number one ways of anti-aging is caloric restriction. There's, a, I don't know how many published studies are on caloric restriction, which is another form of hormesis. Remember hormesis, that which does not kills you, makes you stronger, which is why you did a live with Wim Hof, right? Why does he go into ice cold water? What does that do? That causes the body to naturally respond. Right. If we're living sedentary lifestyles in five star hotels, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, we're very susceptible to disease and getting sick because our body is not being put to the test. Yes. Right. We that's why I jump. That's why I, I don't eat for two days sometimes. That's why I do intermittent fasting. That's why I shut down the body's ability to be, have, have to break down food 24 seven. That's why we take cold showers. That's why we do so many different things. These are micro, micro things that cause mm. the body's immune system, the natural killer cells, the immune system to fire up. So that's so the, intermittent fasting. So the way I intermittent fast, just so you know, yeah. I don't take in a calorie till about 12.30, 1 o'clock mm -hmm. every single day, a calorie, right? So I do herbal drinks on the rise. I do all those things, but they're non-caloric. So around 12.30, 1 p.m. is when I have my first calorie, and then my calories stop around 7.30 p.m. here mm -hmm. in Pacific Standard Time. So I have about a seven, eight, nine hour window. I'm not crazy about it. I'm not like yeah. a s soldier, you know what I mean? I just, I have a good momentum going, and that's how we want to operate. We don't want to be like looking at our phones and having these calculators everywhere and all these different things. That's not natural. We want to get into the natural rhythm and the circadian rhythm of our biological clock, right? The sun, the moon, all those things. Last two questions. Um, Fine Food Affairs uh, profile is asking, what is better, whole fruit, whole fruits, uh, or fruit smoothies? Whole fruits, hands down. Whole fruits. You, your body, your body. So when you talk about high glycemic and we talk about insulin response, that's why I'm not a fan of fruit juice. 
I don't drink fruit juice. I never drink fruit juice ever. Mm -hmm. I'll drink green juice, which is just greens. I don't even put the apple in there anymore. It's just too much on the human body. We're not designed to be eating an onslaught of all of those monosaccharides, which is a simple form of sugar. Even if we just, we can't do it. It's too much. So if you're going to have fruit. So you're not putting even bananas in your smoothies? Okay. So if I have a banana, it's a small amount just to get a little bit of that potassium, just to get a little bit of that texture. Bananas in there. You, you, well, you're, 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 yeah, that could be too much. That could be okay. causing a little bit of metabolic waste and a little bit too much. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. We, we need to find you a good health coach. <laughs> <laughs> Blame it on my health coach. Yeah, uh, I'll take responsibility. The, the last well, you don't one, listen to me. <laughs> the, la, the, the last one is um, the uh, protein and creatine as a sports supplementation. Sure. What was your take on that? I love it. I love creatine. I love creatine. I just, the only time you take creatine is if your body's kidneys are working because creatine has to go through your kidneys, right? Mm -hmm. Creatine is a, a basically, um, it creates cellular volumization with hydration. That's why if you take a lot of creatine, you bloat, right? Well, what, why is that? Because it's retaining water and that retaining water allows more ATP which is adenosine triphosphate, which we know is the energy center that's created through the mitochondria and cellular exchange. So creatine is great, but at the right amount and from the right source. And I would say um, most bodybuilders, people like that, they're taking upwards of 10 milligrams, uh, how many, how many, 10 grams a day, 10 grams. it's crazy. It's, so, it's unbelievable how much they're taking. Micro amounts of creatine is good. It's also known to be a good nootropic. Right. So it crosses mm -hmm. the blood brain barrier and it's good for your brain as well. So, you know, maybe 150, 200, 250, 300 milligrams of creatine per day. Just make sure your kidneys are functioning and make sure you're moving your body. You have to be sweating. You have to be active. You can't be stagnating and taking things like creatine. And then in terms of protein, that's the big question. How much protein should we be having? You know, should we follow the 40, 30, 30 play, which is you know, 40% carbohydrates, 30% protein, 30% uh, fats, right? Or another one which is quite popular is 80-10-10. 80-10-10, right? Don't get into any of that stuff. That's my personal opinion. You can only do what works for you. Once you understand how the human body works, like watch this video over and over. Understand how the kidneys work, how the lymphatic system works, how acidosis works. Once you have all that, and, you, and you're in, on the right level, and you start really realizing how the human body works, then you can start looking at things like that and see how you can mold that into your lifestyle. Are you, again, are you an athlete? Are you a weekend warrior? Are you working hard labor every single day? Are you sitting in an office typing in front of the computer? Are you sitting on your couch 12 hours a day? What kind of lifestyle do you live? And if it's, you gotta go corresponding to your lifestyle. So it's basically, first step is, get some understanding, some awareness uh, and education about how body works. Yes. Uh, then detoxify yourself. And yeah. then you can start with various diets, you know, experimenting and understanding what works for your best, right? Absolutely. Like you can't, you can't go, you can't jump ahead of it without getting, without having the roots ready. You know, you can't, if someone, someone asked me, hey, I've had some world-class athletes ask me, should I be eating, you know, six ounces of steak every two days, like it's to build my muscles? And I can't tell them yes or no, but the first question, the first thing I tell them is, is your kidneys working? Because when you eat that steak, your body has to go to, has to break that meat down. That meat is a complicated chain of amino acids. And in order for the body to break that down, it causes so much cellular and metabolic waste and acidosis. And if the kidneys aren't properly flushing, then you're just building and building and building toxins and toxins and toxins. So again, we gotta get to optimal levels. Our center point of our body has to be in homeostasis before we can start thinking of things like that. And at the, corner of that, at the cornerstone of that is hydration, mineralization, fruits, herbs, lymphatic drainage, exercise, mm -hmm. all of those things. 
Last one, uh, interesting one. Sherry uh, Jolly asked your, uh, the book recommendations on how the body works. Do you, do you have any recommendations of, or the good reads? I have so many, I wouldn't even know where to begin. How about this? I'll post, yes. I'll post a list of my yes. top five books that will give you a good understanding or understanding of how the human body functions on all of these levels. How about that? Fantastic. Thank and you so much, brother. Hey, it's an honor. Always, this is, these are always so good, man. And to be oh, able good. to uh, just teach one person makes my day. And I want to say this again. I always say it. We are just the messenger. This is just our perspective based on, you know, understanding things that we love and things that we do. That's my, that's the only point of everything that I do is to really start looking deeper and deeper. And I always ask everybody, everything that you know today, where are you getting that information from? Where did that come from? Why do you think a certain way? Because your perception is your reality. And whatever you've seen on TV, whatever you've seen in the newspaper, whatever you see here, that's what's going to be telling you how things are. So I really ask you and implore you, start going deeper, deeper, because I need you. Novak needs you. The more of us that can come together in truth and awareness of how our bodies work, because my only goal is just for people to be happy and healthy. We should not be hitting chronic diseases in our mid-40s and 50s. We shouldn't be dealing with premature aging. We shouldn't be dealing with the high rate of cancers and emotional diseases and neurodegenerative diseases. It's unbelievable. The amount of neurodegenerative diseases that we're dealing as a nation and as a worldwide is becoming an epidemic. It's a scary thing. And I, and I have so many friends whose parents are entering early on stage dementia. You should see that I, I get these messages every day from so many beautiful people. And that's, the, that's why we're having these conversations. That's what Absolutely. it is. It's yeah. So Absolutely. I honor Thank you so much, brother. Thank you for, for for sharing that. Thank you for also investing your time, energy, your knowledge, and uh, your willingness to share, share, share your wisdom and your experience with everyone. So I hope Absolutely. everybody enjoyed it. Uh, I certainly did. Of course, made my notes. Hope you did too. We'll we'll repost this. Of course, this live so everyone can can see it at any any given time. That is. Uh, that is comfortable for them. Thank you so I'll much. I'll post my five favorite books. I'll post my five favorite yes, books. Please and, do. Um, and again, we're a family. This is a tribe. So it's Absolutely. an honor, everybody. I love you. Ashagatam in Farsi. Ashagatam. Thank you, guys. Bye. Okay. Bye.